when you're talking about life and love and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ chapter by chapter and verse by verse, life is one day at a time.com. Welcome to Life is One Day at a Time.com. I'm Minister Chestnut, and thank you for joining me again on this exciting episode through the Gospel of Luke. Yes, but first, I'd like to wish you grace, mercy, and peace for 2022. Hey, we're going to get through it all with grace mercy, and peace. We pick it up in chapter 7 in the Gospel of Luke. And now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into a Capernaum, and a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. Now this centurion, he was part of the Roman army. He was a Roman asking for help from Jesus. He was a, a believer. And when they had came to Jesus... They besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and had built us a synagogue. Now Jesus knew of all the synagogues that were in the area. So he, he knew that he was a good man. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent his friends to him, saying to him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou should enter under my roof. Now, when you enter into someone's house, you become under their jurisdiction. The Roman centurion, he was being humble. And telling him, hey, I'm not worthy that you should come under my authorization. Verse 7. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, go, and he goeth. And to another come, and he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. And turned around about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found such great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent returning to the house found his servant whole that had been sick. All Jesus had to do was say a word. He, he had that authority, power and authority. Verse 11. And when it came to pass, the day after that, he went to a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him, and much people. And now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And the Lord, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. Now, you know, all Jesus has to do is say a word. He had compassion on the little old lady. Verse 14, and he came and touched the briar, and they that bare him stood still. The briar, that, that was like a little wicker 
coffin or wicker basket that they laid him in. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came fear upon all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us. And that God had visited us, his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round and about. And the disciples of John showed him of all these things. And John called unto him two of his disciples and sent them to Jesus, saying, Are thou he that should come, or look we for another? Now, John was in prison at this time. And so he, he couldn't see all the different things that Jesus had been doing. Because Herod had put him in prison for talking about him and his wife. Verse 20. When the men were coming to him, they said, John Baptist sent us unto thee, saying, Are thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. He sent that word back to John to let John know, yeah, yes, he is the one that you had been preparing for. You had made the path straight for Jesus to come. Verse 24. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. Went out ye out into the wilderness for to see a reed shaken with the wind. He's talking to the people about what did they expect to see in John the Baptist. But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeous apparel and have lived delicately are in the king's courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. He's talking about John the Baptist. And this is he of whom is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Now, that was quoted in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Verse 28. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Now that was a flip on words right there, if you catch that. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. And But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves being not baptized of him. And the Lord said, Wherein then shall I liken the men of this generation, and to what are they like? He's talking about the scribes and the Pharisees, the people who uh, did not get baptized by John. They didn't heed his word. Verse 32, they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace, calling to one another, saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned to you, and you have not wept. That's that they were, they were professional mourners. They go to funerals, and they mourn. But, hey, 
the people who the funeral was for, they didn't weep. Verse 33. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And you say he had a devil. The son of man is come eating and drinking. And you say behold a gluttonous man and a wine bibber. A friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. And one of the Pharisees decided that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. He went in, sat down, and got comfortable. And behold, a certain woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him and, and weeping and began to wash his feet with her tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. And now when the Pharisees which bidden him saw it spake unto himself saying this man if he was a prophet would have known who and what man or woman this is that touched him for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered, said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. And there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. One owed five hundred pence and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most. And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he who, of whom he forgave the most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, See thou this woman, I have entered to thine house, and thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. And thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. And my head with oil did thou not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I say unto thee, her sins which were many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with them began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Another example of how the scribes and the Pharisees couldn't understand that Jesus was the Son of God and he had power and authority to forgive sins. He had already proved that earlier with the man with the withered hand on the Sabbath day. That he was Lord of the Sabbath too. Hey, Luke is breaking it down. This is getting real exciting. But I'm out of time. We'll pick it up next week on another episode of Life is One Day at a Time dot com in the Gospel of Luke. How hard is it for everyone everywhere to come together and pray? Stop, take a minute, pray, rejoice. Don't forget, life is one day at a time.com comes on every week with Minister Chestnut live and in living color. So be there every week because Jesus is our rock.